Medical texts are full of accounts of patients who make unexplainable and amazing recoveries from life-threatening illnesses. But few of them are as mysterious as the one you're about to see. And we leave it to you to decide whether or not it was a miracle. With Joe's life hanging in the balance. X-rays revealed a small hairline fracture at the base of Joe's skull, a direct result of his original accident, but with a far more dangerous consequence. He was losing spinal fluid, and he was losing it fast. This is very dangerous because any time fluid can leak out from around the brain, bacteria can go up that same hole and get up into the coverings around the brain and cause meningitis or even a brain form of brain abscess. If it's left untreated, it is a potentially fatal condition. The prognosis was devastating. Joe was immediately scheduled for surgery, a surgery that was so delicate that it could leave him with serious physical side effects even if he managed to live through it. Joyce tried not to show Joe how frightened she was, but she knew she might be losing the man she loved forever. And so together, they made an important decision. Their marriage would no longer take place in September. It would happen now, in the hospital. You'd marry me like this? Yes, I would in a minute. The entire hospital staff helped in the preparation, and on July 12, 1986, the ceremony proceeded as planned. Joe was on a stretcher, but I guess standing up there saying our vows, I didn't feel like he was sick. It was just like we were in our own little world, you know, saying our vows, and this was it. This was the beginning of my, you know, my new life with this special person. Right at that moment, everything felt right. It was just perfect. The plight of this young couple touched the hearts of friends and neighbors and many in the small community showed their support by attending the event. People that I didn't even know were coming up and telling me, hey, you know, we're praying for Joe. You know, we're praying for Mr. Tucker. Let him know that we're supporting him. But there was one person whose prayers would change their lives forever. She arrived in Joe's room the night before the operation, long after visiting hours were over. Mr. and Mrs. Tucker. The Tuckers didn't recognize the woman. You don't know me, but I've been sent here to pray for you. We were just thinking she's one of the people from the church visiting that visits all the patients. We ask that Joe be healed. The woman told Mr. Joe that he would not require surgery the next day, that miracles do happen. The woman's words gave Joyce and Joe a sense of peace and comfort, but before they could thank her, she was gone. Let me go find out who she is. Yeah. And when Joyce ran to catch her, she was in for the surprise of her life. When I asked the nurse, I said, did you happen to see which way the lady that just came out of Joe's room in a green dress went? And she says, nobody come out of your room. I thought, well, that's odd. I said, well, lady just left, you know, that came in the room to visit, and I missed her leaving. And then she said again, she said, well, I didn't see anybody come out of the room. Who was this mysterious lady in green? Was she real? Or had they just imagined seeing her? The next morning, they received their answer. When the doctor arrived for a pre-op checkup, the fluid had miraculously stopped flowing. This looks, this looks really good. It looks really good. And I said, it has stopped. I'm not leaking no more. He's made me shake my head left and right. It stopped, and Joe says, well, you remember what that lady said? She said there wouldn't be a need for surgery, and that's when Joe and I realized she was right. She knew something. We're going to do a couple more tests in a few hours, and if everything works out, you may be going home tonight. You're kidding. I'm not kidding you. Right? You're not kidding me. I was like, you know, wow, well, I'm supposed to have surgery at 7, but in a couple hours I can go home. Now, this is... This is perfect. I don't want to see this place again. Joe Tucker was released from the hospital later that day. And in the 12 years since then, he has never had a recurrence of the problem. He has also never been able to find the woman who came into his room that night and brought with her 
the miracle of his recovery. I don't know if she was an angel or not, but to me she was, because I know I didn't have to have surgery. Nothing went wrong. Did she come from heaven? Did she come from Albany? That doesn't matter. What's important is the message, the message of comfort. There's no doubt in my mind that God is still in the healing business. Recently divorced and struggling young mother yeah. was moving into a modest one-bedroom apartment with her two sons. Were you? Money was tight, and Ivy had trouble making ends meet, even with her job in a doctor's office. Her situation became particularly troubling during the holidays. One of the hardest Thanksgivings I ever have had was Thanksgiving after I was divorced. Waking up for Thanksgiving, realizing that nobody had provided us to their home. The only food we had in the home were three hot dogs. And it was, it was an overwhelming feeling of, what have I gotten into? And how am I going to get out of this? Credible occurred. Honey! And this little old lady came out of the uh, bottom apartment. And she says, oh, honey, I cooked Thanksgiving dinner for you and the boys. And I'm just looking at her. I've never seen her before. It was just a complete stranger. Oh, no, we couldn't impose. But the woman was so insistent that they join her for dinner that Ivy couldn't refuse. Okay. The woman's invitation was a prayer answered. Entering the apartment. Absolutely comfortable. That was what she created that evening for us. Food, yes, lots of it. But for me and the loneliness that I felt, what she gave to me was unconditional love. And it was just one of the most special evenings that I have ever spent in my whole life. As Ivy and her sons were leaving, the neighbor presented them each with a gift. Thank you so much. But they also left with something they desperately needed. Food. Loads of uh, leftovers. I mean, we had food for a week. If you can compare how I started in the morning with that total feeling of despair and loneliness and not good enough, to ending up feeling I'm okay, I'm worthwhile, I'm a good mom. It was a miracle. The unexpected act of kindness had given her a new lease on life. But the next day, Ivy was in for an even bigger surprise. This Thanksgiving was not just a random act of kindness by a thoughtful neighbor. I got all my containers to take them down to my new friend and went down there and knocked Hello? on the door and there was no answer and I looked through the windows and the place was absolutely dark and not one piece of furniture in there. I mean even today I get goosebumps when I think back on just seeing that empty empty apartment and I was like uh oh something's going on here Shocked and confused, Ivy immediately contacted the apartment manager. Yeah, what can I do for you? And I go, where's the little old lady that was in that apartment? Fifteen's been vacant for 10, 12 weeks now. And I said to him, no, you don't understand. I had dinner there last night, Thanksgiving dinner. And he gave oh, me I this understand. weird look, I like maybe I should be in an institution or a hospital. Ivy, are you feeling okay? And I remember just looking at him, absolutely knowing that a miracle had happened in my life. And I just thanked him, turned been. around, and walked up those steps to my apartment. Thanksgiving dinner for you and the boys. As she returned to her home, Ivy began going over the events of the previous evening in her mind. And suddenly she realized the woman had known personal things about her that she couldn't possibly have known, like her favorite food. <gasps> Potato salad! And the fact that she worked in a doctor's office. Do you like your job at the doctor's office? Yeah, 
How'd you know? Well, I just know. <laughs> I often wonder why I didn't pick up at the actual <laughs> dinner amazing. that this was an angel. Well, we're going to have some good food here. I think one of the most important things about my dinner with an angel is that out of my 57 years of living on this earth, that one and a half hours of being loved unconditional has changed my life so drastically. Can you imagine what it would be like if us earth angels gave some of that unconditional love away? It can make a total difference. Thank you so much.